I've been taking you through the whole process of tuning this copter and, and dealing with the vibrations and then finally I dealt with the vibrations and now I've walked through the tune. What I want to show you now is the test flight that I run when I'm evaluating a tune. It's not the same every time, but it has the same components. So I'm going to walk you through this. I'm going to tell you what I'm doing and what I'm thinking and what I'm looking for. When I very first start flying on a new tune, I'm always looking for any uh, bad tendencies that might indicate I have a major problem that I need to stop and retune immediately. Strong oscillations that are indicative of majorly excess P gain or D gain would be, you could burn your motors or your ESCs if you're not careful. If when I first take off, I have any strong P-term oscillations or I hear any bad like oscillations, D-term oscillations in the motors, I'll quickly land, I'll check my temperatures and I'll maybe go back and lower things a little bit. It's always better to start low and work your way up if you do that, you may have a soft tune that's not fun to fly, but you probably won't damage anything. If your numbers start too high, you can burn a motor or an ESC before you know what you've done. Now you're going to see me doing some sharp turns, trying to induce some prop wash scenarios, and I'm looking for oscillation and listening for oscillation. Right there. In this next segment, I'm going to show you how I check my eye gain. You're going to see me punching and chopping the throttle at various different attitudes. So at first I'm going forward, and then you're going to see me turn and drift sideways as I punch and chop the throttle. And I'm watching for the nose of the copter to drift when I cut the throttle rapidly or when I raise the throttle rapidly. If those rapid throttle responses produce changes, uh, like the nose dips or an arm dips or the yaw, sometimes the yaw, but usually it's pitcher roll, then that means I need more eye gain probably on the axis that is moving. This is actually very relevant to flight and not just to testing, you know, to theoretical testing, because especially depending on what props and motors you're running, you may find yourself pumping the throttle a lot in actual flight to manage your altitude. Some pilots don't do that, other pilots do it more. See here, as I chop the throttle, the nose is dipping, and as I raise the throttle, the nose is rising just slightly, but I don't want that. That's not what I want. And now I'm drifting sideways and doing the same thing. Ready? Yep, so they're very, seems very stable while moving sideways. Don't seem to have much of an issue with roll, but a little bit with pitch. And now you're gonna see me doing some much more aggressive prop wash turns, again, looking for oscillations. Try to get a lot of speed, a sharp turn, cut the throttle, and then punch it. Around here, you're also gonna see me start mixing more yaw into the moves. I find that adding, right, right there, adding yaw really challenges the copter because it uses so much of its authority to turn the copter that it can have less authority for other axes. Of course, I'm also going to do flips and rolls during my testing. And in the flips and rolls I'm about to show you now, you'll see just the tiniest bit of rebound at the end of the move, which may indicate, mm, could indicate low P gain, could indicate perhaps you need a little more D gain, or it could indicate that the I term is causing rebound. And we would want to make sure that we were zeroing out the I term on high stick deflection, which beta flight does uh, under various conditions. If you're not running beta flight and you're running a firmware that doesn't zero the I term, then you might need to reduce your I term or I gain in order to prevent that. That'd be a shame. The last thing I'm going to show you is some pylon style turns that I do. And I think that these kind of very sharp high-speed turns are useful for seeing if your yaw p-gain is correct. If my yaw p-gain is too low, I just cannot hit these turns reliably. The copter feels really sloppy, and it just doesn't turn into the turn right. You see also that flip or that roll there was very sharp, ended very snappily without any bounce back really. So that's good. This copter is flying really well in this particular example. Copter feels really good when it's turning in, feels really controlled. I'm able to hit this gate very precisely without having to turn in extra soon or without the copter feeling slidey or sloppy as it goes. Uh, pilot skill notwithstanding, of course. There's the throttle cut without the nose wandering much. Pretty good stop there. Not Maybe not perfect, you might could nitpick it if you went frame by frame, 
We're pretty good. Pretty good. A tiny, tiny bit of rebound, I think, there. But all in all, I'm pretty happy with it. Not much uh, audible oscillation at high throttle. Motor sound pretty smooth. Little oscillation there. I kind of don't like that. I really want the top of those teardrop moves to be very smooth. So I, 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 that's something I will definitely look into. Watch. Right there. Right as I start to apply the throttle again, I get a little bit of a shimmy there. Maybe that means my min throttle needs to come up a tiny bit. I'll definitely look into that. There, again. Uh, definitely do not like that. Do not want that happening at that moment as you're cresting that move. That zero throttle move, and, and you really want to be just floating through the air as gracefully as you can. Alrighty, well that's the end here. That's the end of this tuning session. Uh, certainly not comprehensive, but I hope uh, you guys have some idea of the kind of things I'm looking at when I'm doing a test flight. You know, I've, I've seen some comments other places where people say, you know, is Joshua Bardwell guy's alright? He does black box but it's a little too heavy for me <laughs> and i thought you know i do a lot of line of sight or not line of sight but vi visual fpv stuff as well so i thought i'd show you some of what i was looking for hope that's helpful and as always happy flying